use of his feline cunning. Fear will never solve the puzzles that lie between himself and the truth behind the shadowy, bright, poor industries. Bright Paw is the new narrative puzzle game by Radical Forge available on Nintendo Switch and Steam, about a cat on a quest to uncover the mystery of his owner's murder. The kitchen seemed normal, except what was that he could see across the room? He had to take a closer look. But along his journey, our hero begins to realise not all is as it seems. Let's get into it in this Bright Paw review. Our story starts with this adorable little floof ball named Theo. Oh, there you are, Theo. Honestly, it's your own dream. And my god, is Theo enough to melt your heart? He awakens in the night to hear loud crashing noises in the next room. Ah, what was that? <laughs> and decides to investigate why he was so rudely awakened. It's there that he discovers his owner murdered. And from there, we set off on a journey to discover why. I won't go too much further into the plot as I don't want to spoil anything and I really feel the narrative is what drives this game. It's from there we begin to encounter various hazards and robots intent on stopping Theo completing his goal. Each stage is a puzzle based traversal challenge where movement is determined by the cards you're dealt. No, that's not a rehash of the old saying, in-game cards are used to move around the stage in either straight lines, L shapes or S shapes. You'll avoid hazards such as rogue robots, conveyor belts, lasers, and much more. You can rotate the stage to get a better vibe of the direction you need to take. And if you get it wrong, you can reverse each move individually or choose to refresh the whole stage. There are collectibles everywhere, each one offering a small insight into the developing plot. Granted, Theo seems to take a lot longer putting the pieces together than you do, but I personally loved watching this naive little kitty come to the realisation that his owner was not who he seemed. The collectibles and the narrative really sell this game and kept me engaged throughout. There's a sheer nihilism to the narrative and item description that I can really get behind and it gets better the further you go. Theo found his eyes drawn to a large portrait on the wall. Was that Nathaniel? The world has a very distinctive feel and aesthetic that I really couldn't get enough of. It's very stylized with bright colors and sounds that leave you excited to explore the next room. The train segment is one of my favorites here, with Theo desperately trying to stay on top of the moving train before it loops back around to the station. Predicament extremely upsetting. Luckily, he just needed to hold on until the train loops back to the station. All of this is accompanied by a fantastic soundtrack. I swear this opening screen gave me Kingdom Hearts feels and I love it. Now, I'll address the elephant in the room and say that I'm not a fan of puzzle games. Hell, you can slap Sonic or Spidey's face on a puzzle game and I won't look twice at it, and God knows I would rather physically crush candy with my bare hands than play the game of the same title. So it's with this knowledge that I'm amazed how well Brightport kept me engaged throughout, and there's a few reasons for this. The puzzles themselves are really fun and make you think. It didn't matter how many times I burnt Theo to a crisp with laser beams, I never wanted to walk away. It just drove me to rethink my steps and find the outcome. I'll be honest, puzzle games don't do that much for me generally, and I know that's on me, but most puzzle games have me giving up after a few attempts, but I never felt that with Brightpool. The level design is well thought out, and the plot premise is so good that I would die five or six times in a stage and be even more determined to reach my goal. I think this is also due to the narrative, which once again is just incredible. Looking back, Theo considered that it was perhaps unwise to leave such destructive toys lying around. There's also a lot of replayability in the game with various skins for Theo to unlock. I've not unlocked them all yet. I'm hoping there's a tabby or black and white skin so I can dress Theo up as one of my babies. I kept going back to stages to see if there's any collectibles I missed as to get further insight into Theo's nefarious owner Nathaniel and the bright poor empire he has built. Bright poor industries. This game is oozing with personality and everything within the game, be it movement, story or assets in the stage, really speak to this and give it its own unique flavour that leaves me longing for more. 
That's not to say this game is light. There's plenty of adventure packed into this game, and for the price of $9.99, it's an absolute steal. Like most of my peers, I'm not going to use a number score for this, as it's kind of arbitrary and constantly leaves me second-guessing the number I gave. So I'm going to do this a little differently by saying this game is definitely worth your time and money, and is a fantastic story that will leave you satisfied yet hungry for more. The game is currently available on Steam and the Nintendo eShop, so I recommend heading over there and picking it up. Before I close, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Bruce over at Radical Forge for providing me with the Steam code for this, and you can bet I'll be picking it up on Nintendo Switch for those morning commutes. So yeah, that's my review for Brightpool, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and consider hitting subscribe for plenty more regular content. I'm putting a big old Calamity seal of approval on this, and finished by saying, Theo for Smash.